People come to listen to a sutra lecture, and once they've heard, they become magnetized. They hear one passage, and they want to hear the next. This makes sense. They exclaim, "I like the flavor. It's really sweet." Sutras are said to be constant because, from ancient times to the present day, they have not changed. Not one word can be added or taken away. They are permanent and unchanging. The sutras are said to be methods, for they are revered by beings in the past, present, and future because they contain methods to cultivate the way, realize Buddhahood, and teach and transform living beings. The Buddhist canon is composed of twelve divisions. All twelve may be found within each sutra. The twelve divisions are. Prose, reiterative verses, bestowal of predictions, causes and conditions, analogies, past events, present lives, broadening passages, previously non-existent dharma, unrequested dharma, interpolations and discussions. The first of the twelve divisions consists of the prose sections of the sutras. In Chinese. Literally, the long lines. The second division is the reiterative verses. Consists of verses that rephrase the meanings expressed in the prose sections of the sutras. The third division is a store of predictions. In the sutra, Shakyamuni Buddha may tell a Bodhisattva, "In such and such an age, you will become a Buddha. Your name will be such and such. Your lifespan." Will be so long, and in such and such a country, you will teach living beings. An example is the Pankara, burning lamp, Buddha's bestowing the prediction of Buddhahood upon Shakyamuni Buddha in a former life on a, the coarse ground. Shakyamuni Buddha cultivated the Bodhisattva way so sincerely in his search for the Dharma that once he spread out his hair to cover the mud. Why did he do that? Once in a former life, when Shakyamuni Buddha was walking down the road, he noticed a bhikshu walking toward him. He didn't know the bhikshu was actually a Buddha. The road that lay between them was muddy and full of puddles. If that old bhikshu walks through all this water, he's bound to get drenched. Thought the future Shakyamuni Buddha, and out of his respect. For the triple jewel, the ascetic laid down the mud and the and water. He used his body as the mud on top of the water and invited the old monk to walk on his body to cross the puddles. There was a small portion of the puddles still exposed, and fear the old bhikshu would have to step in the mud. He loosened his hair and spread it out over the mud. For the bhikshu to walk on, who would have guessed that the old bhikshu was the Buddha? The Buddha, the whose name was the Dipankara, was pleased to witness such a sincere offering, and he said, "So it is. So it is. You are this way, and I am also this way." The first "so it is" meant. You have but now made an offering to me by lying down and allowing me to walk over the top of your body. The second, so it is, man. In the past, I was this way too. I also cultivated the Bodhisattva way. His meaning was, you are correct.